Good morning, good afternoon, good evening all over the world. Dobson777A here. Welcome to my channel. This is going to be a very interesting video uh, for my channel, but I do a lot of diverse uh, things and I wanted to compare the Ford Mustangs uh, track times uh, because there's this big hoorah-rah going on between the GTs and the EcoBoost specifically. And uh, I was actually planning on doing some videos of trying to get together uh, people that have purchased these various types of Mustangs and uh, get one race car driver like the uh, Stig was on Top Gear. And lo and behold, I kind of stumbled across that uh, somebody's already done this uh, with Tire Rack. And uh, so I've kind of brought the data together. It's diverse information that's spread out of a whole bunch of videos. And it actually has been very interesting. Now, the reason why I've got a picture of a truck on this screen is I'm not a novice compared to the EcoBoost, at least related to the EcoBoost. Um, I bought a 2015 Ford F-150 2.7 liter uh, twin turbo EcoBoost um, back in 2015. And this is the first year they came out with the aluminum bodies and I had been shopping to replace another vehicle and I found this one in the back of the lot. It had some damage on the back corners up here. Long story short, it was a transportation damage and it looked like a bird had crapped on both sides of the truck right on this back pillar here. And by the way, I've got a crew cab, not this particular one, but it was this color. I love this uh, ruby red or whatever it was called. It's gorgeous. But in any event, uh, it had been sitting there for months and no rust. And I was like, I thought it, like I said, was bird crap. And I realized, oh, that's just the aluminum exposed. And so they marked it down for me. They hadn't been able to sell it because nobody wanted something damaged. I love scratch and dent. So I picked this thing up for a pretty good discount. And, you know, when they were done, you couldn't tell. It was repaired perfectly. But I wanted you to know, this thing was, is, is fast. It's like a scalded dog. And I went and just pulled the specs real quick to give you. And by the way, I get 18 miles at a gallon, no matter how I drive. I'm kind of a lead foot, but uh, I just drove from one side of Atlanta to the other, to the south side to the north side on a fresh tank of gas and uh, got 18 miles at a gallon. Stop and go traffic, all kinds of stuff. It's got the stop start technology, you name it. But it's 375 foot pounds of torque and uh, 325 horsepower. Um, this is a V6 now. It's not uh, a four banger like what we're gonna compare in the Mustangs, but I just wanted to let you know, I love this truck. It's got like 57,000 miles now, and uh, the only thing that I didn't like was the tires that came on, on it, and I changed to some Cooper ATSs or AT3s, I think it was AT3s. And then the other thing was uh, I had a faulty battery. Uh, these uh, these batteries on the stop start technology it uh, it just was a bad battery from the factory and after I'd had the truck for about a month uh, I was able to take it in show them there was a problem with the battery and got that resolved but guess what all I've done is oil changes that's it 55,000 miles in fact I think I just did a brake job so look this has been bulletproof I love it so I just wanted you to know this is the basis of why I started looking at the new Mustang EcoBoot. It's actually not new, but the HPP is from an RS engine, and that's what I'm going to be comparing to today against the V8s, which I would say the V8s are done, folks. After looking at uh, what's going on with the, uh, the four-cylinder turbos, they're killing these, uh, these other V8s. They're just too big, too heavy. They're, uh, they just can't keep up with the technology and the weight and everything that's happening with the four cylinders. So let's go on and let's look at this. So this is the uh, 2020 EcoBoost with the high performance package. And there's actually a handling package also that I highly recommend you get. And to combine the list price on this is 44,000. But I've noticed these 2020s now uh, you can pick these up for around 36000 not tax tag title, maybe 39 tax tag title, all this. But they have done a track test of this, hot lap they call it, and it ended up with 134.57. And we're going to go through the details. I'll show you the different tracks they used. And this was 100 degrees F, 
and the race car driver said that man if this had been run at you know in the 70s or something this thing could have run all day but he was noticing that the engine was uh, cutting back uh, because of uh, protecting the engine because it just couldn't get rid of the temperature uh, for that hot day that they had there but 134.57 now check this out i'm kind of giving you a little bit of the answer right at the beginning but i'm going to show you the details behind this uh, later so check this out switch over to the next one 2020 GT500 CFTP, $93,000 versus $44,000 list. Look at this lap time, 133.84. Now you're going to notice this is, I'm not going to pronounce this right, but Laguna Sica. Uh, and this other one was uh, Willow Springs. And I've done the analysis, even though they're different uh, uh, racetracks and different uh, length of the track. The actual track records are virtually identical so uh, in time. So this is not uh, a big difference. One second, less than one second, folks. 134.57 versus 133.84 GT500. Now look, four cylinder. We'll go through the specs on this, but I just want you to know, this is my research. This is unbelievable to me. People are paying two times as much for less than a one second advantage on a track. That's unheard of. Now let's go look at some of the details. All right, so the first thing I thought we ought to do is look at some of the specs on here. So here's a standard EcoBoost 27,000, City 21, Highway 30, fuel capacity 15.5. You can go, worst case, 325.5 miles if you drain the tank. The HPP, you can go 310 miles, but you can see you go up another $7,000 with those couple options on there. GT, you jump up another 6,000, but you can only go 240 miles. GT350, you're almost doubling the price of an HPP at this point, and you can only go 224 miles. The GT500, you're uh, nearly tripling the price, and it's uh, you can go only 192 miles because the, uh, the city mileage drops down to diddly squat. So let's look at this right now. The Eco HPP is a 2.3 liter four cylinder, 330 horsepower, 350 foot pounds of torque. It's 3,671 pounds. Now this is in the same class as the GT350R. You can see uh, very similar weights, but these other cars are much heavier, 4,300 pounds and 4,225 for the GT500. You get all this extra horsepower, but it's hard to use it on a track. You're not doing a straight line run, and that's what happens. So when we look at all these lap times side by side, the HPP is a 134.57. The GT on a shorter track is 1.7 miles. It was 123. And I, since they did this, I can't tell you, you know, how to convert this, but uh, we probably can do just a rough um, approximation to bring this up because you know that's uh, nearly a mile shorter distance and so this is going to be a really long time and the, the race car driver who's got all kinds of records he actually hated the GT he thinks it needs a lot of work still so then the GT 350R 13611 it's slower than the HPP the GT 500 we already went through this and I threw in the Camaro because I found a hot lap for that 13430 it's, it's right in line with the Eco HPP, but look at the price on this one, uh, 73,000. Okay, so the Camaro's uh, two times more expensive than the, uh, and you you gain uh, 0.27 seconds on the lap times. All right, so let me compare because um, these times are different based on uh, two different tracks. The HPP was on one track, these other ones were on another track, and let me show you the difference on those. So the HPP was on this uh, 2.5 mile course, and, uh, and Michael Andretti completed a lap of uh, within one minute, six seconds, average of 136 miles per hour. Now the Laguna Sica was one minute, six seconds, and just a little more time. But you can see this is 2.238 miles, where this is 2.5 miles. But because of the curves and everything, it actually equals out to exactly the same. So this is a very good comparison between these two, because these are virtually identical. There must be something 
within the uh, racing rules, the way they've set up these tracks where they're trying to, you know, roughly get it within uh, uh, one minute. And then here's the third one that the GT was on, and this was 1.55 miles. And the, the track records on this one was uh, one minute, 18 seconds. Um, and the hot lap for the GT was one minute, 23, almost one minute, 24. Now the curious thing is when I went and looked at the uh, all these uh, track records for the different types of cars, Randy Popst, I might not be pronouncing that right, but he's the one that does the hot laps for tire rack. And he's got the majority of these records in here. You'll notice it's a Nissan GTR uh, for this short track here. So he's the one that's been doing all of these uh, testing, including the uh, Z06 here. And you can see that the GT hot lap comparing to the Corvette Z06 was uh, nearly four seconds uh, slower. So that gives you an idea. So here's a number of, uh, I looked at the uh, track times for the different vehicles at the Laguna Seca track. And this is where the majority of the data came from tire rack. But for some reason, the EcoBoost, they did it on Willow Springs and they did it on extremely hot day, which is kind of a worst case thing. It's kind of a neat thing to do it. But if you look at where this thing is rated in here, uh, it's right between the GT500 and the Porsche uh, Cayman, which both are uh, more than twice the cost of the EcoBoost HPP. And you look at uh, down here, the GT350's uh, 136, so that's uh, uh, two seconds slower. The Corvette is uh, three seconds slower. And the Cayenne Coupe, uh, this was some SUV they did, it doesn't really matter. but. Look at this uh, company this thing is in. Within just a couple seconds of a Ferrari F8 Trabodo, I'm massacring this. And then you got a Lamborghini, but look at it, 365,000. That's like 10 times the cost. Porsche 911, uh, nearly three times the cost. I mean, this is right in line with the rest of these for $44,000, folks. Uh, this thing has a lot of magic. I'll probably have to do a video just on this car alone, but I mean, I've been researching this and this looks like an unbelievable value that I don't understand why people are poo-poo in this four cylinder because it looks like the V8s are gonna die. There's just too much dang weight on these V8s. If you come back and look at the weights that I got set up here, um, you're carrying all this extra weight and the race car drivers, they want all that stuff pulled out of there. And that engine just makes the nose too heavy. And this is much more nimble. I also wanted to point out, um, I, I meant to do this earlier when I was talking about this, with a improved mileage of 310 miles on the HPP uh, for city driving, and I assume in race driving it's going to be significantly better than the GT500, the GT350, or even the GT. When these guys are going around the track, this four-cylinder is not going to have to stop as often. It's gonna keep going significantly farther than the other cars, and that uh, allows you to just get more laps on everybody else. So that, that's that gotta be something you've got to consider, uh, depending on, you know, it's, it's not like we're gonna be doing the uh, Indy 500 or anything, but in any event, uh, this is an advantage as well. So let's go listen to a couple of the, uh, uh, Randy, what he says about these vehicles and uh, see what he says. Now I'm going to put a link to all of these uh, videos that I'm going to show some parts of this uh, for you to uh, to experience what, what I've learned here. And uh, I find this really interesting. This was, I couldn't find a 2020 GT uh, review, but this was a fast lap of the uh, 2018. And after listening to this a couple different times, it appears that this, and I put a comment in here because somebody was saying it sure would have been nice if they had compared one with the Magna Ride, but at the beginning they talked about that this had a performance pack and uh, based on the timing and the reviews I've read in Ford, uh, it took quite a bit to dig this out. It looks like this probably had the performance pack one uh, and this contained a Magna Ride damping system among other things, you know, Brambo, six piston front brakes, all kinds of stuff. But later, because of the complaints, this car wasn't keeping up with the Camaro, uh, Ford came out with a uh, performance pack two for another 2,500 bucks. So this performance pack, performance pack was uh, $4,000 for the number one. And then there was a, a $2,500 uh, pack for 6,500 total 
um, which added uh, some more things and there was actually track calibration with the magna ride damping system so anyways i wanted you to be aware and so this is the time that they had for the and I listed in the other table, 123.97. Let's listen to what Randy has to say. Well, welcome back, Randy. I mean, that Mustang out there on the track, performance package and all, what'd you think? The performance pack is conservative, Matt. The, the Mustang runs great, what an engine, revs out, stops great, but it's too soft. It, it's not real happy on track. It's a wonderful street car. I, I drove it over the mountains on the way here. But on track, it's just too soft. But you know what? The tire grip was great. The, it said 4S. I couldn't believe an all-season would run like that. <laughs> well, the horseshoes, shall we say, being on the Mustang, they were on there, those uh -huh. Michelin Pilot Sport 4Ss. Yeah. That 4S is not for all season, four seasons, as oh. many people might think. Definitely a summer wet and dry tires. The grip was amazing. I just didn't like the chassis on track. Too soft, Matt. Sure. Well, they've done a great job of upgrading it with that wonderful tire, so. All right, That's so here's Randy now uh, doing a hot lap with the GT500 CFTP. And this was a 2020 Ford Mustang Shelby. And uh, you can see the lap time, 133.84. So let's listen in what he has to say. What a fun car. Front engine, supercharged, rear wheel drive, and a chassis that works. Really impressive work from Ford Performance. So, how'd the Mustang do? <laughs> Mustang, Mustang, amazing. The power and torque, the, the supercharger really spreads that torque curve and it's doing it all through two wheel drive and I'm just blown away. I'm shocked, it's the complete package, right? I mean, I it doesn't agree. have a weak spot. This is the best stopping car we have. Yeah. Between the, it, it's got the R compound Michelins on it and something's really right in the calibration because this ain't no lightweight. No. And <laughs> it feels so good to go ripping over turn one here at Laguna and then go to the brake, and the G, there's yeah. so much power. Well, 760 horsepower is 760 horsepower. Let me ask you this though, a couple years ago, we loved the uh, Shelby GT350R, right? The naturally aspirated sort of version of this. And that car did a, I wanna say 136.11. We know you were quicker. How much quicker do you think you were? Oh uh, God, two seconds, maybe three yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, right in there. Uh, this car, the GT500, did a 133.84, which, uh, you know, not long ago would have been a track record. I mean, it's, it's a, the fact that it's a Mustang is ridiculous. It's a huge success for Ford Performance. But okay, this is what you have been waiting for. This is the 2020 Ford Mustang EcoBoost high performance package engine and it is also the high performance handling package as well, the performance pack handling package. So I will tell you right now, this should shock you on what this video shows. I'm only gonna show you a couple minutes of this six and a half minute video, but you should be afraid if you're a V8 owner to know that the, the four cylinders are here and they're not going anywhere. They're just gonna get better and better and I'm telling you right now, they've destroyed the V8s right now. I don't know why anybody would spend $100,000 when you can get one for 40, less than 40,000 right now. And that's what I plan on do. Hey, it's Randy Popes with Motor Trend. And this Ford Mustang EcoBoost is the Shelby GT350 of four-cylinder Mustangs with the engine from the well-loved Focus RS. Today, we're gonna to take it out on the racetrack to find out what this untraditional performance Mustang is all about. I find this car very interesting. Why does it exist? In short, it's an ultimate performance version of a Mustang at a lower price with better fuel efficiency and modern turbo technology. And it even sounds good. With both the high performance package and the next level EcoBoost handling package, this Mustang makes 330 horsepower 
and puts it to the ground through big 19 by nine and a half inch wheels shod with Pirelli P0 Corsa 4 tires. Corsa in Italian means race. That's some serious rubber with a motorsport derived compound. Interestingly, each time you add a performance package to the Mustang EcoBoost, you get a bigger rear sway bar. It gets bigger, bigger, bigger. What that does is reduce understeer because the front sway bar is the same size. So the Mustang is getting more and more lively in each upgrade. And up front, bigger brakes. These are Mustang GT brakes and rotors. This part is spoiler. Underneath is the aerodynamic magic. There's a flat underpan that goes well back below the engine, reducing drag, reducing lift, and in it are a couple of tunnels, very clever, cut into that splitter to suck air up from underneath the car through deflectors mounted by the brakes to cool the brakes. Very cool arrangement that also reduces lift. These ducts on a hood, they're real. They opened up to underneath and let heat out. I love it when the ducts are real. That Turbo 4 is working so hard because it's running 22 plus pounds of boost and it's making 330 horse and 350 pound feet of torque. This little boosted four makes more low end torque than the V8. Great little engine driving a six speed Getrag that you know and love in the Mustangs and a newer 10 speed automatic that's smart. It works. Out back, the power runs into a rear end with a lower final drive. It's a 355. Lower gears is the oldest drag racing trick in the book. Makes a car accelerate faster. Now that we know what we're working with, let's see what this pony with the heart of a hot hatch and some sticky Pirellis will do on track. Boy, I can break late in this car. balance through turn two. Oh yeah, we're going quicker than we did first lap. We just had to warm up these Pirellis. Good brakes up into turn three, flat out, very slight drift. Mustang chassis is really alive, beautifully balanced. Look at that. I can just power down, not a hint of wheel spin. Let's torque it out of here in fourth gear. Pulling good, pulling good. Come on, baby. Seat back's very supportive. Let's do this flat. Turn eight, let's do it flat. Oh, easy. Easy deal. There's a better exit. Oh, yeah. We're up three miles an hour. I think we just had to warm up these Pirelli courses. Knowing the spec on this Mustang EcoBoost, I was really looking forward to the hot laps. It's got the high performance package. It has the Mustang EcoBoost handling package and it delivered. Sticky Pirelli Corsa tires, beautifully balanced through long turn two. I could just go flat out through the fast turn eight and it was stuck. It was easy, beautiful, as good as any Mustang I've ever driven, to tell you the truth. As we ran, however, temperatures started coming up. Like I mentioned, it's 100 degrees out here today, and we're running 22 plus pounds of boost, just too much for the cooling system, and the car cut its power to preserve the engine. That was the warning message on the dash. Overall, what a fantastic car. I bet if it was 70 degrees, we could have gone flat out all day. It's a sweetheart on the track. More sports car than it is muscle car. Thanks. All right, to wrap this up, I wanted to go back to these uh, Laguna Seca track times. And uh, remember, the EcoBoost was 134.57, where the Ford Mustang Shelby was 133.84, less than a second difference for a car half the cost and it beats out the GT350 by uh, two, two whole seconds, which is almost twice the cost. So I want you to think about what are you doing? You're, these are not necessarily drag cars, they're meant to be track cars. 
And uh, these things can't compete with these four cylinders now. Granted, he talked about at the end of it being a, uh, you know, 100 degrees out there, and I'm sure over time they're going to be able to uh, work through that. But uh, in any event, this looks like it'd be the ultimate. It's the ultimate sports car, and it's it's destroying these V8s. So you got to understand there's a trade-off in everything you do, but you're carrying around a bunch of extra weight. You're burning up a bunch more gas for the GT, and these four cylinders are going to wipe your butt on the track. So that's my uh, two cents. I hope you enjoyed <coughs> this video. This was my first uh, automobile related uh, uh, video. And uh, I, I really can't wait to maybe someday be able to pick up one of these cars because it'll be a perfect match for the truck that I already have. I love my EcoBoost truck. Even though it's a V6, it's a twin turbo. I just have loved that aluminum body truck. And I'm telling you, I work that thing like a dog. I had a, a 2010 Nissan Titan, and I would put these two side by side. That Titan couldn't pass a gas station, and uh, I've done just about everything else that I need to do with this truck. So, yeah. all right, I hope, uh, hope you guys are doing great. That's it for this video. I hope everybody's treating you well. I hope you're doing well. Do the best you can. God bless. All right, go party. We gonna go bye bye? Are we gonna go bye bye? Are we gonna go bye bye? Are we gonna go bye bye? Yeah, all right. You going to get in the car? We're not quite ready. I'm almost ready. You almost ready? Okay.